Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This video is just going to serve as a documentation update for the GPU particles in my Niagara Blood Droplets pack available in the Unreal Marketplace. So I've just updated this, this pack um, and I made a quick fix because the Blood Droplets weren't spawning and that was because the streak timeout was not hooked up and was just being set to 2 by default. Uh, so if we set this to something longer, uh, the streaks will last for longer. Let's, let's try this again. And as you can see, you can get a pretty cool looking dripping effect uh, that works pretty well. But unfortunately, GPU particles and GPU collisions do come with limitations. So this video is basically going to talk about how to set these collisions up and the problems you're going to encounter along the way. So GPU particles, they rely on the mesh distance fields uh, to calculate their collisions. So mesh distance fields are basically a way for Unreal Engine to approximate the scene and the environment uh, by converting the meshes to uh, cheaper volumetric data basically, um, which is just, it's good to render and it's what they base some of the distance field ambient occlusion and distant field shadows off. Uh, they also use this for the collision in Niagara GPU particles. So the limitations with distance fields come about from the four megabyte resolution cache. So we can preview really quickly, and this is just the demo map GPU, no changes have been made to it. If we go to the mesh distance fields, this is going to give us a preview of what each mesh and their associated, you know, generated mesh distance field looks like. So this sphere here, if we open it up and we search for the distance field resolution, right here it's two. If we set this down to 0 0.5, just get this ready. And then we click apply. You'll see now, and it might be a little bit hard to see on YouTube, but the resolution of the sphere is actually a lot lower. So if we change this to 0 0.1, a little bit hard to see, but if we crank it back up to 2 and let it calculate, you can see we have this perfect sphere coming back. So that looks great, you know, you think you think collisions would work perfectly fine on that, and they would, but unfortunately the engine doesn't use the specific mesh distance field, it uses the mesh distance fields to generate the global distance field. Now the global distance field has a 4 megabyte resolution limit. So what that means is you can only have four megabytes of volumetric data in your whole scene. So one way of working around this is decreasing the global distance field view distance in the world settings. Uh, so by default, it's set to 20,000. And you can see when it's cracked up to 20,000 right off the bat, we've lost some quality in these meshes that are further back. So all of this clear thing, all this clear area here, the particles are just going to fall straight through the ground there and not react to it. But as we get up close, it's still not going to render actually. Uh, there's not enough memory in the cache left to render anymore. So if we drop this down to 10,000, you can see now, we can see the full mesh, we can see the ground, we can see the little lip at the front, and as we get closer to it, it builds and it gets a lot clearer in data but as it gets further out and we're having to render this extra area around us this is taking up part of the four megabytes all of this data starts to get culled away and the further we go back the sphere starts to, to degrade and eventually the whole thing just sort of degrades and collision doesn't work very well um, and this is why I'm saying the GPU particles aren't particularly good in open world environments because 10,000 units it's, it's a decent distance, but it's not that far, and 10,000 units isn't that great of a result anyway. Somewhere closer to 5,000, uh, 2,500 even, um, is going to get you much clearer, much better distance field results. You have that whole area here now. Whereas if we scale this back up to 10,000, all of this starts starts to get more approximated. So you can see 
that the resolution is very much limited by the view distance. So for this reason, I recommend using the GPU particles in more closed in environments or environments where you have more control over the distance fields. So to take this a little bit further and give one last example of setting up a more complicated mesh here, uh, in the Unreal Content Demo, there is a static mesh statue. So we can go back and turn off this visualizer or you can just hit G and quick switch out of it. I'm going to spawn this in, scale it up five times and we can drag this emitter over and when we simulate my bad poor depth perception okay so you can see here the collisions are actually intersecting the mesh the blood is hitting streaking down then it is falling and it is not working very well at all and if we stop and see it again you can see the issues so if we hit G and we go back and look at what our global distance field actually looks like you can very hard to see that's not going to show up but you can see anyway that there is a huge chunk of the mesh being shaved off and this is the collision data being generated so this can be improved that's no problem we can just go in we go into the LOD settings and we just turn distance field resolution up. Now we've scaled this thing up five times and it's it's a pretty complicated mesh. So I'm just going to chuck distance field resolution of five in here. And obviously the more you use, the more expensive it gets. It's got its resolution there. This is using 0.2 megabytes of data and we've only got four. Um, and we have to render this whole area. Um, so it does go very quickly. But you can see now that we have a great representation of what this model should look like. And if we go back and we simulate this, we can see now that the particles are hitting it where you'd expect. And if we drag them up a bit more, bring them a little closer, we'll get the cool streaking effects happening as you'd want them to happen. Now, again though, as we scroll away and say, if we start at this point about here, all of these collisions aren't going to work very well. So, I mean, you can't really see what's happening at this distance anyway, but as you get closer, it will start to work again. But any, any particles that spawn in that intermediary period or any discrepancies are going to show up with the particles a little bit. So <clears throat> if you're requiring more detailed collisions, uh, more accurate collisions, I recommend using the CPU particles but you do lose this really cool streaking effect so these particles are definitely usable um, they're just usable in particular cases um, they're not going to be suitable for every game or for every environment uh, but that's why these were included as an extra these were designed second and for everything else the GPU particles can't do the CPU particles can do uh, the only difference is the streaking effect um, and that's basically just a performance limitation uh, the GPU particles basically let us get around but unfortunately it's a trade-off with the distance fields so I hope this gives you a little bit of a better understanding about how the collision works uh, how it's rendering uh, importantly the difference between the mesh distance field and the the global distance field um, and the fact that the global distance field only has that 4 megabyte resolution and as such you very much need to scale down the view distance if you're going to want to have accurate collisions up close but as you can see it's it's still usable um, you still have quite a bit of distance to use it with but if, if you're making a sniper game and the enemy is 10,000, 20,000 units away uh, you're going to want to use the CPU particles so I hope this video helps I hope you've learned something from it anyway and Hey, I hope you have some success using these in your game. I made these particles because I am a big believer in gore and permanence in video games. And for me, I think we need more of it. So I would love to see this in production. Uh, feel free to join me on Discord. Feel free to share your work. Always happy to happy to see it. And yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hope this helped. I'll, I'll see you next time. Bye.